scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Any success you did not invest in it, you are not qualified to partake. That's why there are some men that only married. There are some, come now, sweetheart, drop your Bible. There are some, there are some men who get married to a lady. They are married though. But this lady is like a stranger. You know why? The guy was already a multi-millionaire. And she's just one of the many things that happened to enter his life. Are you following me now? She has her room. The only thing he does is to sleep with her. That's all. And that's even when he wants. He's like the kings of old. So she's just roaming around like a nanny and a house girl. In that's, not, that's not a good home. Are you hearing me? Children say, Mommy, one banana. I say, mm -hmm. Go and ask your father. Me, ma, they brought me inside this house. <laughs> me, ma, I'm inside this house. No confidence. You know why? You were looking for something that could not be found. And since you found what looked like it, you have to pay the price there. But a brother that you were there with them, you so Gary together. You say, how much do you have now? Don't worry. See, I don't have anything, but I'm speaking God's word. And you can see me. I'm showing you the blueprint of what I'm doing. Now you brought the gari. We drank together. Do you think if we enter the... What car now? <laughs> say something realistic. Don't tell me limousine. Say something realistic, please. A good car. When we enter a good car, listen. Do you think... Listen. Do you think this lady will be carried away by my prosperity? Because we have been there. Are you listening? You grew into this thing together. Many of you don't want to grow into the blessings of marriage. Some of the wealthy people we know today, ask them. When they got married, the man didn't even have a bicycle. He didn't even have vision for some of them. Just one fellowship, they were strolling one day and God caught him. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. God started walking. But now, the woman is partaking of the blessings. Whether you like the madam or not, she owns the company with her husband. Because they suffered. And she can look at you and tell you, I remember those days. Don't celebrate success that does not have history. It's fake. Any success that does not have history is fake. I assure you, if you are laughing, hold on, stop laughing. Any true success must have history. It is the history that will preserve you in that realm of success. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Very important. Unreasonable expectations. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I set realistic standards. Refer to our message. Um, I think that's um, Family Life 2. We, we stated some very clear and reasonable standards. Bless you, sweetheart. Thank you. Hallelujah. What you want does not exist for many of you. So you must come down and believe. It's still part of this running away from responsibility. Many people don't want to build. Many ladies don't want to build. What if I build this thing and later he says I'm not the one? The Bible didn't say you will reap where you sow. It said you will reap what you sow. Hallelujah. Number two. Now, this is important. Please, everybody listen. Health factors. One of the reasons why people do not get married or they marry late. Of recent, this has become a very, if you are involved in 
any kind of marriage counseling or maybe in your church and all of that, you know that this is a very big issue. Is that true? Health factors, the issue of genotypes, blood groups. I want you to listen very well because for you, what brought you to the sister is beauty and the vision you saw. For your mother or for your father, they know the things that they've had to endure or somebody they know. Are you listening to me? So they have parameters that may not appeal to you. Are you listening to me? Is someone following? Genotype. What do you do? Listen. What do you do when someone who is of a genotype SS? Alright? Now you meet this sister, you love her, two of you are getting together and then you find out that she's also SS. What do you do? And the thing has entered two of you. You have told yourself, do or die. Hallelujah. Now you've gone to meet the marriage council on your church and they say, Tor, listen, no. we had the story of so-so-so person like this and they didn't listen to us. They gave birth to five children. The five children all died. Are you ready for all of these things? You know, is someone getting blessed tonight? These are not issues we young people consider. Ah, Ibuku, Jesus Christ, let Ibuku answer me, oh. Hallelujah. Many of us are too afraid to even consider this thing. Say, look, let's just move. Let's not spoil what God is trying to arrange here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Health factors, blood groups, genotypes. These have become very serious issues. In many churches, I know that this, this thing varies from church to church. Is that true? And I know that there are rules already in some churches. They don't take it. They don't care what you saw or what you had, or how long you have been together. Once they find out that your genotypes are not compatible, they advise you strongly and guide you towards leaving one another. They say, no, please, we can't take it. We are not ready. And from the human perspective, please listen, because some of you have insulted all these people. Let me tell you something. From the human perspective, History has shown us that these kinds of things have brought a lot of problems for families. SS marries SS or AS marries this and then they have children who keep dying or children who are having, you know, a lot of problems. The father has problems, the mother has problems and, you know, in quotes, they become like a liability to a lot of people. Family members, loved ones, they now kick the man out of his job. Now, what do you do? Look up, because some of you probably are in that situation right now as I'm speaking. And you're trusting God for guidance. So, your father or mother said, see you, this guy, you won't marry the person. For 10 years, you poor together. They say, ah, won't you marry? They say, no worry, we're organizing things. I say, this is what is happening. Late marriage or no marriage. This is one very serious reason. Now, if you don't believe in the supernatural, here's my kind advice. Quietly live. Did you hear what I said? I'm giving you an advice that may not make sense now. But I'm a, if you do not believe in the supernatural, what did I advise? It is my advice. I didn't say God told me. Paul will speak and say, I speak as a man. You may have your relationship programs and somebody may have another opinion. The reason is because, listen... If you do not believe in the supernatural, what the medical science said will happen, will happen. Are you listening to me? And you will live your remaining 30, 40, or 50, life, uh, or 50 years in misery and pain. Let me tell you the truth. I've had the opportunity to pray for people and families with these kinds of things. And I know that this is not nice. There are situations where the whole family... Father, mother, and the one or two sons, they are all down. What do you do? And for the rest of your life, there is torture from your family members. We told you. How many of you know that kind of thing? Well, thank God we have married people. We told you. Aaron, we warned you. Benga, you didn't hear. You were in love. Now, see, see what has happened. If you believe in the supernatural, you will get up and do something about it. Hello? That kind of supernatural that God will change it when he wants to change it. Uh -uh. That's not a valid supernatural. Alright? So, come sweetheart again. Now, I'm SS, she's SS. 
both of you have come and you have you have found out that this is a serious constraint but both of you are convinced listen let me tell you i hope you know god is not an author of confusion and i hope you know miracles still work we have seen genotypes blood groups whatever change here so many of them now what what you would do listen i'm telling you what to do straight to the point you agree and say look do you believe this can work because if you are the only one who believes it the lady already in her mind she has left you she doesn't just want to embarrass you are you following me now you say let's pray ah. the lady goes back and says brother john i've not really left you it's just that let's be patching it things are getting messy here now you know ladies have a very funny way of putting one leg here they can detect when the bridge starts breaking they won't tell you they will just stretch their leg london bridge is falling down so they'll, they'll just be part so that whatever happens they can wage themselves quickly if you are involved in that repent tonight in jesus name double dating is wrong period i don't care what you have what you you watched in your nigerian film and soup opera what oprah winfrey told you Niger uh, what i want to say nigerian film is wrong i like nigerian films don't double dating is period hallelujah do you the bible says can two walk together except the amos 3 3 so you must agree sweetheart do you believe that god are you convinced about this and think about it again if she needs time don't be angry she said honestly see let me tell you something um can you give me three days yeah huh? i've known three days you don't uh -uh. You, this is this is a very very serious issue don't just get emotional and start shouting at the lady say now nah, i'm agreeing you are refusing we have not even married we're already quarreling no no but if listen if you think both of you can work this out can i tell you something seek advice and start working it early is that true because there are some of us that are very stubborn and have gotten ourselves in trouble no this is the guy your parents say why don't see let me tell you i believe in the words of elder so i hope you're hearing me i'm telling you the truth sometimes parents may not know why they are saying what they are saying but i tell you there is a depth of wisdom you are you are remember our emotional obsession teaching Ay! this thing is burning you as your father or your mother is talking is entering here flying out there you are not here you know fix this wedding date let's do this thing and let the devil be put to shame but they are telling you listen listen you will get married you will dance that day court cake and everybody will go the people who come for your wedding see there is a difference between wedding and marriage correct wedding is valid for 24 hours your marriage begins fry plantain for me honey i'm down no, no please I'm working in this house to bring money. Me too, am I not suffering what you are suffering? This is how the trouble starts. So if you know, if you think you can believe God for it, honestly, I'm giving you a very honest and fair advice. Many men of God will spiritualize this thing I'm saying and just tell you, don't worry, things, just believe, claim it, take it. Mm -mm. It has led to a lot of casualties. If both of you cannot believe God for it, cry, fast, have your last supper <laughs> and end the relationship don't break it believers don't break relationships they end it with wisdom and grace and bless one another but if you can believe god for it then start making efforts when it's time for miracle service you say, ah, where are you? you? Say, I'm in the market. Say, leave that market. We'll leave that market. We have something both of us have agreed upon. God will give you the miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless you. Right? Let's hurry up. Number three, geographic, cultural, and family factors. Right? Why do people experience late marriages? Or why don't people... There are some families your parents have already given you warning right from when you were in primary school. You didn't even understand what they were saying. They said, see, bring, you know this globe that is in our house, map of the world. 
they zoomed it to Nigeria. They said, any state I draw a pen, let me not see you there. Are you ready? Yes. Number one. Number two. There are parents of, there are geographic factors that even in the same state, they tell you it's not enough. Is that correct? In fact, some, even in the same village, they say, uh-uh. This clan had this, this in 1921. They had a problem. Now, let me explain something you, that many people may not understand. You see, during the time of our parents, the world was not as heterogeneous as it is right now. Is that correct? Many people live in yards and compounds. All the ladies used to go to the stream together. So the guys could time. Natina. They could just see and know that, okay, in the next 10 years, let me just allow this investment to grow. In the next 10 years, I can be able to come and... So, they knew themselves. The parents knew the parents of the other person. Is that correct? They fought together. They celebrated festivals together. They did a lot of things together. So, when you came and told your father that, ah... Is Grace now, Mario? Where is Grace from? Sokoto, they say, ah, where exactly? Say, ah, I know the father now. Give me five. You're a very nice guy. This is the kind of thing we want. Geographic factors. What is the probability of finding somebody from your village who is born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, blessed, visionary, what is the probability? I, I, no, I want you to be very honest and realistic. What is the probability? So in our generation, there will be a lot of crossing of boundaries. Some of you, they wiped your whole village in war. You, don't even, you practically don't have a village again. You put migrated somewhere. So when your father or your mother is saying they should get somebody from where? The old republic, your old place or the new one? Some migrated to Cameroon. Some ran, you know, all of these things. Full of, there are full of new people that ran to Sokoto, some to Maiduguri, some to Gombe. So when you are saying a full of, from where? You must marry a full of, Benga, a full of or nothing else. Which one? Because they've scattered to different places. Hallelujah. It's my personal opinion that that should not be a factor. However, listen, you, you know that I will always balance things. Are you ready now? Some of you are already sad looking at me. This is the reason why some people have not married. Sister Mary, ha -ha, till now, see my third child, see I must wait until my change comes. Since you were in the university, now both of you are doctors. Nothing. See, I'll wait. Oh, I'll wait. Cultural factors. Geographic factors. And for many of the things that our parents do, what is their... I hope you know their, their excuses are legitimate. But we know more now. Are you following me? What's their excuse? When there is trouble, when there is fight... When you tear yourselves into pieces, they know your father, they know your mother, they can come and sit down. But where you cross boundary, Lagos and Maiduguri, who knows who there? They fought during the traditional wedding and promised themselves they will never look at themselves again. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm saying? Some of you don't believe. I'm advising you, you better free your spirit now. I'm giving you the reason. Before we pray, open your mind and say, Lord, you will not destroy me. For the Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil. For other, other places, the parents say, ah, the people in this place, they are witches and wizards. Let me tell you something straight to the point the official religion of africa was witchcraft every tribe every state everywhere is that clear so don't start saying this state 
They are every who doesn't know them. Eh? Now you want to bring trouble for us. As if it was missionaries that started your own state. Now, look, let me tell you something. Witchcraft, idolatry was the bane of the day in Nigeria, everywhere. Every strait has traditionalists, herbalists, has people who are practicing witchcraft, killing people, eating, whatever it is. It's just that some have more than some. But everybody has it. Are, are you listening to me? I'm very serious, please. As you're laughing, I hope you're getting me. So, don't ever use that as an excuse. Say, these people, everybody from their village, they, no. And now, listen, our parents, listen, our parents have had so many experiences that validate their claims. So, while you are trying to defend yourself, don't just look at them and say, old generation, because I tell you something, they have testimonies of people who did not listen. Are you following me now? And they got married running down the line 10, 20, 30 years. Some of them are still suffering today. So don't just kick what the parents are saying. Can I give you an advice? If you are crossing boundaries, no three things. Number one. Number one. Wickedness, territorial wickedness is real. Write it and never forget it. If you are crossing boundary to any state or any local government, be aware of the demonic predicaments around that place. And be sure that you are ready to take the burden. Please look up. I want to be very, very, I want to speak to you tonight. Look up, please. A lady, for instance, whose whole family, she has an extended family, all right, and say they are all Muslims. Are you following me now? And only the lady got born again. Are you listening to me? Maybe her father is this and that, her mother. There are a lot in their families. Now you are coming as a brother. You say, this is the lady I'm going to marry. I hope you know that there is a battle to fight there. Everybody answer me. If you pretend and spiritualize it and trivialize it, you're going to run into a lot of trouble. Is the battle because the lady is bad? No, but you see, when you are married, you are not just married to the lady, you are married to the lady and everything associated to her. Are you listening to me? To her troublesome auntie, her diabolic uncle, they are all your relatives now. Her money mongering cousins, her materialistic nephews, all together. That's why they sold the Ashoke for you to see them on the wedding day. We are now one. Hallelujah. So when you are crossing boundaries, be very realistic. I'm telling you, be very what? One lady called me one time and I won't mention names, but her father is a bishop. You know, somewhere, I think somewhere around the maybe southern eastern side. And she told me that the guy baths all his daughters with chicken before giving them out for marriage. The lady now, sorry. Are you listening to me? The elder sister, the father at her age, oh, whether whatever you he said, he said, look, you don't know what you grew up with. You are, we are the ones that have suffered this thing. Just keep quiet and let me bath you and you will go. So when it was the lady's turn now, she ran out of the house. So it was during her exodus that she called me. And she said, this is what they want to do to me. I said, you mean it? They said, they must do it. There is a covenant that had been running around their family. That that's what they must do. Listen, I want to talk to you tonight. Hallelujah. So the man must bath them with chicken. As they are, bath, they are making incantations. So they bath the lady. Her elder sister told her, I said, this is what I did though. That what they planned with the fiance is that immediately they finish. They just run mountain of fire straight. Lagos, about that express was straight. They went there for deliverance. So they said, if you can do it. But the lady said, but I see, it's not like I'm in ignorance. This is taking myself to go and give the devil. Are you following me now? 
This is the reason why certain parents may not want people from certain places. That leads me to the fourth point, demonic oppression. The reason why people do not get married, demonic oppression. Demonic oppression. We live in a church that is so unaware of the activities of Satan. We are all new creation in Christ. The Bible says do not be unaware. I know people have exaggerated things when it comes to Satan and the things of deliverance. But let me tell you something. Demonic oppression is real. Especially in marriage. Are you hearing me? I'm giving you a frank and candid advice. When you see us say, go out with somebody who is born again and serious with God. Some of you think, okay, you know, these guys have been... Demonic oppression is real. The euphoria of your emotional attachment will fade when those demons begin to deal with you. Hallelujah. Let me stop there. Second subtopic. So this is why people experience late marriage. Unreasonable, ridiculous expectations, health factors, geographical factors, demonic oppression. If you don't believe in marrying people from other places, pray. You can negotiate with God. He's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. If the trouble is too much, you can say, God, can you give me a brother from Kano that loves God? I'm from there, for God's sake. Save me this headache. God will bring a brother. He will come for koinonia. He won't know what is bringing him. The answer to so God, no, God is faithful. Let me tell you, our relationship with God is on a personal basis. There is a way you can agree with God on some things and he will do it for you. I assure you. Hallelujah. Have I helped you? Because some of you are saying, can't we bend? You mean there's no way out? There is a way. There is a way. It's between you and God. Number two. The reasons for fight in homes and unfaithfulness. Marital fights and unfaithfulness. It's one thing to get married. It's another thing to live in that home. Is that true? Many of our homes and our marriages are shattered in pieces. And we need to find out what is wrong. Why do we have fights? Two people. Sorry. Do you accept this? What You didn't wait for them to finish talking. Do you take this lady as your wedding? Yes. Yes. You far by the grace of God, yes. Two of you said you would you are you doing yes. Think about it. Oh, yes. Does anybody have anything any, against this marriage? Nobody's now. We declare you husband and wife. You poor are hugging and kissing, and you are happy. Two years later, the man looks at you. Who did I marry? He wrote songs, called you the lily of the valley, called you all kinds of things. Sugar in his tea. Mosquito in his net. After two years, three years, there is fight. Can I tell you something? Let me run faster than myself and tell you, sex is not enough to preserve the strength of marriage. Because I have seen people with eight children. How did they get the eight children? I will kill you. This is a man that slept with his wife to have eight children. Now he will kill her. Hallelujah. So what are the reasons? Do you know, listen, statistic tells us that one out of every two marriages in America ends up in a divorce within the first five years. Right now, this thing has gotten so bad that in many churches now, you go to church and go to court too. It wasn't really like that, but what is happening in this society now? A man can be married and leave his state and come somewhere and just be strolling, come for koinonia, see a very nice lady like this, turn her mind like a pendulum, and then get married to her, go and buy small golf and give the parents. The father will say, you must marry this guy. You must marry him. We have suffered. It's enough. Now you get married only to find out that you are the wife of somebody else's. You are a concubine. Why do we have fights? And then I want to tell you something. 
the rate of unfaithfulness listen this is a study i made by myself the rate of unfaithfulness in christian marriages i was talking with my sister yesterday and she was telling me of a survey that they did in our local church not somewhere else our local church married women that are not submissive and ladies that are promiscuous that have really spoiled i don't mean uh, okay you went and slept with somebody by mistake willful willing conscious derailing from the things of god when they announced the statistics to the church parents were afraid parents were afraid fathers were afraid mothers nobody trusted themselves again which one are you in these statistics now because they didn't announce anybody's name when my sister told me he touched me hallelujah do you know right now there is almost no trust in our homes hallelujah some of you you are even in a relationship because of how the guy is behaving like an armed robber once he goes to his himself you quickly carry the phone let me check who called uh-huh uh-huh and then the guy will save the lady's name as joseph oh come on we know these things say ah joe yeah when you are home, you say, ah, why are you calling me by this time now? You don't know my wife is at home. Immediately I come. Have you delivered it? Okay, I'm coming to Lagos first thing in the morning. Please don't waste my time. I, I need to spend time with my wife. I found out that I've not been spending time with her. And she's laughing. Not knowing that the man is unfaithful. So why is this happening? I can act. If ministry didn't work, I would have done it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number one. The reasons why we have fights violating the love respect principle how many of you remember our love respect principle what's the principle that husbands should do what love their wives ephesians chapter 5 from verse 22 to 25 husbands love your wives wives submit you honor i told you that love for a man means respect and honor nothing more nothing less to the degree to which you respect and honor your husband that's the degree to which you love him hallelujah and for the ladies the degree to which you love her you care for her you give her time remember our five love languages number one words of affirmation number two eh? acts of service number three receiving gifts only ladies are talking number four quality time Number five, physical touch. No, it's not. We're talking marriage now, so you don't need to start it. The star was before you get married. Once the pastor says husband and wife, God himself takes the star away. Until then, God himself stamps it there. If you force the door to open, it will open. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number one, violating the love respect principle. How many men don't respect their wives? Two of them go for a program. You see the man disgracing the wife. How, have you seen some of our parents do that? Don't pretend as if, and you see, and it will be paining you. You see the woman will just keep quiet. Or the woman disgracing her husband. You go, there's small popcorn. You are about leaving. Uh, Madam, can I fetch for this? You are fetching. People are saying, what kind of woman is this? The husband is just standing. You don't know that you are bearing his image. The man is saying, honey, let's go. Say, I won't go. Let me do this. Do we have this in our house? And you are just fetching. The love respect principle. The love respect principle. All the guys say, I will love my wife. Say it, I will love my wife. And the lady say, I will honor my husband. So that's the number one reason. Number two. I won't talk much about that. We are not in a strict, only few people are married here, so I won't talk. Emotional dissatisfaction. Not satisfying themselves sexually and all of that. Leave it there. I'm not saying more. Hallelujah. Thank God there's marriage counseling. Go to your marriage counselor. Hallelujah. But emotional dissatisfaction. And this is not just sex. Spending time together, there is... An emotional dimension is limited before you get married but when you get married come on it's part of what keeps the bond it is a very serious reason why men listen please 
a woman who is busy. You are a tailor. You are a contractor. You have a restaurant. You are, you are in French school. You are learning another language. Every time, you are, your husband will say, oh, he will, you are embarrassing him. You are making him beg you to sleep with you. He will keep quiet. One day, he will stop talking to you. Ah! You find out that your house help is happy, walking in the house, very excited. Madam, how are you? Fine. How is everything? God has been faithful. That's a sign that there's fire on the mountain. I'm giving you an honest and a very candid advice. Listen, let me tell you something. God who designed intimacy is not foolish. Are you listening to me? Violating any of God's principles, tithing, lack of intimacy, whatever it is, will cost you a lot. Sisters, let me advise you. You are not in your house. You are supposed to preserve and help the man. Do you know the wife is supposed to cover for the man? Your husband is a nice, handsome man of God. He goes to minister in a convention. God moves and honors you. You are there snapping. And they are saying, how does it feel to be, you know, this bishop's wife? You are talking. One other lady is giving him compliments. Say, sir, uh, please, God gave me this prophetic instruction. I, I need to come and clean your shoes, clean your trousers. The man says, sir, I insist. Will you, will you hinder an innocent lady like the man? Says, All right, if you insist. Aha. Uh -huh. You were not there. The media is carrying your face. You are happy. You never had it that good. Now you are enjoying it. Many women are careless about their men. I'm not saying just be irresponsible and you can't allow the man rest. He's having a meeting. You are in front of the, the meeting door. You are saying whatever this meeting is, it will finish in my presence here. There are women like that. This is insecurity. Your husband wants to book ticket. You are there. How many people? No, no. Trust. There must be trust. But in the midst of it, there are efforts that you must make. Are you listening to me? Don't allow any. You know, Christian homes, you can see a woman just come at an odd time and say, I want to come and visit your husband. She's calling him all kinds of names. An unbeliever will tell you straight there. I hope you know, unbeliever women, they, won't talk, they will say, please, Call it jealousy, call it whatever. Let me tell you, let it not happen again. Church people, say if I talk like that, what of in the fellowship? Uh -huh. It's until the man travels for a business trip, four months, you are not there. Later on, one of his friends that cannot keep his mouth shut to say, Madam, I need to talk to you. This thing is paining me and the way I trust you, I must tell you. You see that hotel there, your husband is there. Go and meet him there. For four months, he has been there abroad. Emotional dissatisfaction is a very serious issue. Are you listening to me? I didn't want to touch the issue, but it's becoming necessary. Hallelujah. Brother, you are fasting. One week, two weeks. Immediately you finish. You started Maranatha fast. You finish Armageddon fast. Now, wow. Why did you marry? Why did you marry? You would have stayed alone. There must be a place. When you get married, define your lives. Are you listening to me? It's very important. There's a book Ora Roberts wrote. One of the reasons why he said he was successful in ministry was he had very close sexual intimacy with his wife. I don't mean... I hope you know what I'm talking about. Some of you, your mind is already uh -uh. to the pure, all things are pure. Hallelujah. Number three, financial issues. Sorry, my dear. Are you tired? Financial issues. Very important. Why there are fights on faithfulness, marriage, financial issues. Poverty is a very bad thing. I hope you know. Lack is a very bad thing. Finance, lack of finance has led to the breaking of many good homes. Hallelujah. Let me rush. Number four, spiritual factors. Spiritual factors. 
We are going to be dealing with this very extensively tonight. Spiritual factors. You married a very nice, loving, virtuous, wonderful lady. Now the lady has changed. You don't even know who you married again. Or the man has changed. The man didn't used to drink. He didn't used to smoke. He was a brother. He was even an esco in your fellowship. That's what made you like him. Now he has changed. He has a special fridge. Cronenberg. Star. Name them. They pay him salary. He comes up. 300,000 or 200,000. He comes back with 5,000. His friends have helped him finish it. Comes to vomit around. And you are saying, it wasn't like this. There are many families that have these unanswered questions. And the recommendation they gave them is go for counseling. Let me tell you something. This is not an issue of counseling. Are you hearing me? There are forces of darkness militating against families. And if you do not stand to take your position in Christ and conquer these things, you will be surprised. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Spiritual factors. You just got married and you found out that this man suddenly developed epilepsy. He wasn't epileptic. There was no problem. Stress that you cannot, you cannot imagine. You give birth to children. This child has this problem. This child has this problem. This child has this problem. It's not normal. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. The third area I want to talk about very quickly is the issue of barrenness. The reason for barrenness and unfruitfulness in marriage. In Mark 11 verse 12 to 14, when Jesus saw a barren tree, he cursed it. That means God cannot be the author of barrenness. Say amen. Are you listening to me? The command he gave man, Genesis 1 28, he said, be fruitful, multiply. For a long time, the issue of barrenness disturbed me because I've had the opportunity to pray for many people that have suffered from barrenness. And so it was a personal, it was a personal pain in my heart. And I wanted to find out why. Hallelujah. Now the general reason for barrenness is health challenges. You know, all kind, all the whole medical things. Fibroids, no womb, stories, stories and all of that. I won't go into that. But I want to give you something very shocking. Hmm. I'm already sensing the anointing of the Holy Spirit. 98%, listen. 98% of barrenness issues in marriage is a resultant effect of satanic activities. Either in the life of the individuals or tied to their family. Please listen to me carefully. Please, can you hear me? This is very serious. I want to have your attention now. 98%. Sometimes people see ladies or people that are barren and just say, ah, maybe this lady was promiscuous. No, stop judging people. I know healthy people, brothers, sisters, people who loved God, kept themselves. Now the man gets married and they start telling him all kinds of reports from the hospital. Oh, you cannot give birth. Now the lady gets married. Suddenly they tell her, there is a growth in your stomach. Where did it come from? What did I do? Listen, please. Please give me strings. Hallelujah. Strings. 98% of barrenness in marriage. Please listen. Because someone may be a savior. Some of you, it's time for you to set your loved ones free. This is why God is bringing this word. People have been asking questions. Why do we have this sister barren? Ah, ah, we knew this sister, this brother barren. Can I tell you something? It is purely demonic. Purely demonic. I once spoke to a lady years ago. I wish there's a way I can see that lady again. Ah, knowledge. Years ago, this lady came to me and she told me she was crying. And she said, Sir, if I tell you what is wrong with me, you will not believe it. 
to talk to me. She said, I don't have a womb. It's not like I lost it. No fallopian tube, no nothing. I'm as empty as a man. Nobody knows it. She's not told anybody because some of you won't keep quiet. Hallelujah. And this lady was talking to me. Listen, you know, and then those times I was saying, Abba, don't worry. Um, you know, God will do something. God will do all of that. And the lady looked at me. And she said, will I marry? I said, Abba, you marry. Do you know the question the lady asked me? She said, can you marry somebody like me? Aha. <laughs> that was when the thing dawned on me that this lady was not playing games with me here. You know, sometimes you see people come for counseling. You don't know what is eating them up. I looked at this lady. I said, Lord, do you know after I left this lady, I had to go and cry to God. I said, Lord, give me the power for creative miracles or let this kind of people never come to me again. They should rather go to a man of God who can solve their problem. This is too bad. This lady left my place crying. Now you will see this lady and think she was promiscuous, isn't it? Because we are very judgmental in the body of Christ. Once you see anything, you just carry your mouth and start saying things. Uh -uh. The Bible says, judge not. There's nothing. They, they said she was supposed to be a man or something, something, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, all those doctors, medical, we have a doctor here. He gave a testimony. You know, all those things they taught you people. Hallelujah. There are issues like that. A man gets married to his wife. One year, no child. Two years, no child. Three years, no child. What is wrong? There are even to make matters worse. There are times that they go to the hospital, the man is fine. Have you seen people like that? Fine. Nothing is wrong. The woman is fine. Three weeks ago, I was, three weeks now, yes, I was counseling and a woman came to me. Very interesting case. This woman was pregnant. Maybe you would say it's about six, seven, but they would go to the scanning machine. Huh? Ladies. And then they'll find out that there's nothing. It's not like there's fibroid or mm -mm, nothing. Yeah. So when you hear me talk like this, some of you just sit down saying, I beg this. No, let me tell you. God has granted us. You can ask the ministers. They will tell you. Counseling opens your eyes to things you will not imagine. Hallelujah. One day after Koinonia, a lady walked up. No, I saw her. And I knew that something was wrong with her. And I called her. I said, what is wrong with you? And she laughed. She didn't want to tell me. And I asked her. I said, what is it? She said, there's something. It's like, it looks like a worm. But a little bigger than the worm. In her private part. It's a living thing. No, I'm, I'm being very honest with some of you. So that you wake up tonight. We're not playing games here. We're going to pray. Ah. How do you explain this now? And the lady was looking. Immediately I looked at her. I saw the spirit. For this purpose was the son of God made manifest. There are some of you. Listen. I want to teach you something. Tonight. 98%. Delay in marriage. For some of you is a curse around your family pronouncements and projections listen your salvation affects you not your territory are you listening to me let me teach you something here your salvation does not change your territory otherwise they will not be terrorists in nigeria your salvation does not change your territory it takes an understanding of god's word and the operation of the anointing to put the devil where he belongs and release yourself from shackles of darkness. There are many people here. There are all kinds of yokes on your life. Please listen to me. There are many of you here. You sleep in the night. Men come to you to have sex in your dreams. They use the face of your father, mother, the face of another woman, the face of animals. You've just been laughing. That, that's, that's, that's a question mark happening there. The church does not deal with these things. We shy away 
Many of you here, I tell you, because we come from an African continent. Our children will not need to go through this. But there will be a generation that must pay the price. And it so happens that we are the ones in between. Don't let anybody fool you. America is over 200 years. Some people pay the price and pass the heritage of godliness. My children will not need to go through this. Are you listening to me? But someone is got to go through this. And it so happens that you are the one. So let me announce to you, for some of you who have been trivializing things, you've been confessing God's word. People come, some of, listen, I, I want to deal with some things this night. This is pre-miracle service. There are many of you that have been oppressed. You get up, you are bedwetting. You cannot explain it to anybody. You are not bad. People cannot understand. You need help. But the church will not arise. We will keep giving all kinds of flimsy explanations. Some of you have an unusual urge for sex. You cannot, you love God. But you can't see a man or woman. This is not normal. These are operations of spirits. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? There are many of you, there's been, there's been constant happenings around your family. Everybody that marries, there is a divorce. It, it kept happening. It kept happening. Are you ready to break that cycle or you just want to watch and be saying, oh, don't worry. It won't happen to me. You will be surprised. Because it's already happening to some of you right now. This is why God gives gifts to the body. Hallelujah. Let me teach you something about spirits. Look at me. Some of you do not know that there are territorial spirits. Listen, please. That are, are willfully given access over territories. I pray for people for deliverance almost every day. And the demons shout and what they always say is, we have legal access in this body. In the book of Jude, the Bible says, when Archangel Michael came to take the body of Moses, what happened? Satan was there claiming the body too. Satan is still claiming the bodies of people. When a demon leaves a man, the Bible says, it will go through arid regions. Hear me? Seeking for a place of refuge. He said, not finding any. He will say, let me arise and go to my house. He has gone, but he's still calling the man his house. Hallelujah. I was born again. I was a preacher and demons were still oppressing me. Are you listening to me? I confess the word. I read the books you have read. Let me tell you something. I was moving terribly in the anointing but demons would press me in the night. I would sleep in the night and see them come. My shouting the name of Jesus was as helpless as something was wrong. This is what has been happening to some of you. You have a dream. They are pressing you. They are oppressing you. You can't even shout Jesus. You are about to write a serious paper. The devil just comes. Somebody just sleeps between the dream. That's the end of it. Nothing works again. Don't let anybody deceive you. We will not lie to you in this place. The Bible says, Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Tonight, Whatever has held your destiny will bow. This is the re see you. This is what many people like MFM and the rest call spirit husband and spirit wife. I know many people say ah, there's nothing like that. Just shut your mouth, oh, shut your mouth quickly. Because you see, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. The Bible says the things that appear in this realm, that the things that are material were made from the things that are immaterial. There are there are tribes that covenanted people to people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said right from when you were in your mother's womb. I knew you. I called you. That means spiritual things can happen right from your mother's womb. It's in your Bible. He said while you were in your mother's womb. I called you already to be a prophet. Hallelujah. And there are many innocent believers. Not getting married getting barren giving birth to all kinds of satanic things do you know why satan is frustrating you because you or your parents have made a decision to serve the lord do you know i was telling someone i cannot remember with the crude traditional african ways of giving birth sir we didn't have difficulty in giving birth when a woman is giving birth they'll bring fire 
And they will even use knives or something to cut the placenta. Yet women were giving birth freely. Do you know why? Because their allegiance was unto Satan. Some of our parents got up and said, look, this is over. And the devil says, you have declared war. This is the mark. And some of you sit down and just laugh. You like a cool, smooth, nice message that just tells you everything is all right. Yes, potentially. But you need to get up and make it so. It says, we have seen everything under his feet. He said, but we do not yet see. I'm, I'm sorry. He said, he was raised, made a little lower than the angels. Crowned with glory and honor. He said, but we do not see all things under his feet. That means all things have not yet come experientially. Hallelujah. There are, the Bible says, blotting out every handwriting. What, is, what was Paul seeing when he was saying this? What did Paul see? Where did they write the handwritings? There are all kinds of diabolic ordinances against people. Some of you, this is what is responsible for your marital predicament. No man comes around you or only married people. Only married people. Don't say the, there is nothing. No. By now you know that mistakes don't happen in the realm of the spirit. The Lord told me to preach this and set people free this night. Are you listening to me? Delay delay nothing works a man will come into your life you will do the introduction later he will get up and become a strange man to you don't you see what is happening in the realm of the spirit many of you are not reading the handwritings on the wall counseling is not the solution the devil needs to experience the power of the kingdom this is what will put him to flight he said how all inspiring are your ways through the greatness of thy power not through noise not through counseling will thy enemies submit themselves there are ladies, any man that comes into your life, these spirits will frustrate the guy and bastardize his life. You are a good person. There are ladies, anytime you enter a relationship with them, the guy must die. It has happened and they are just giving useless explanations. Beautiful lady, virtuous, submissive, no guy will ever see you. Listen, some of you, once a guy sees you, all he wants is to sleep with you. No responsible man can see you. Only touts and arm robbers and drug barons, they are the ones who can see you. Something is wrong. Is someone hearing me tonight? We are going to pray. If you came here, this is how we are rounding up this series. Hallelujah. Some of you would have been married since, but because of this wickedness, the devil laying claims over your marital life and destiny. Every night, some of us cannot sleep. Snakes everywhere, to the point that some of you even see them physically. I've counseled people. One time a lady came inside, uh, we were counseling. Immediately the lady came inside. She just came in. What? The next thing I saw a snake. Maybe like twice this. Just by her side. I said, my dear, what is this that I'm seeing? And she said, sir, this is why I came. What is this thing? Some of you come from royal families. Ordinances have been made against you. Let me tell you, if you do not rise up in the name of the Lord, be ready. There is trouble. The day you gave your life to Christ, you declared war. The devil marks the line and it takes authority to put him where he belongs. Joe, you were with me in Mina. Please stand up. He was with me when I went for the crusade in Mina. What was the rampant case there? Blindness, deafness. The women, once they give birth, they become deaf and dumb. Ask him, he was there. The first day of the crusade, God moved and mighty things happened. The second day of the crusade, after the crowd, they created a special session for the sick people. If you're a man of God, you will tell us today. They lined from one end, a large crowd to the other end. Ask him. There were over maybe 60 or so people. Those days, when we didn't have this understanding, we'll come and be struggling, trying to heal the sick. Ah, uh ah, -uh, now we know better. I knew that this is about a territory. 
This is about a territory. I settled it in my secret place. More than 40 of the people. I was lifting them from their wheelchairs. Stand up. See, once the strong man, no man will enter into a man's house and spoil the goods without binding the strong man. I give you spiritual knowledge. Many of you, God will set you on fire. You need to go back home and say, Aha, now I know the answer. This is it. This is it. No guesswork again. This is it. Hallelujah. I barely came to the people. Just one touch. Ear open. Eyes open. The mute were speaking. Now this before it will be a spectacular miracle for me but now i know better there are many of you you are you think dating.com or whatever is the solution let me tell you tonight you are going to humble yourself there are many of you in the you see all kinds of things some of you are christians but there are demonic diabolic ordinances I once prayed for a lady who told me that voices, she hears voices. They tell her the things to do. She was walking one time and this thing ladies like putting on their waist. It was on the ground and the voice said, carry it and put. No man except you are on fire. See brothers, let me tell you, if you are not on fire, I don't know how to help you. You will fall like a leaf. There are many ladies that come for counseling. As soon as they enter, I see the spirit of seduction. And I know that if not because I've, I've declared my stand unto God, you will be surprised. Because they tell me how many pastors, even in this area, that they sleep around with. Men and women who stand on your pulpits and speak nonsense. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm angry in my spirit because some destinies will be opened some of your parents in a bid to help you when you were sick or something ran to the village is that true please answer me is that true you were getting admission and they ran they came and said okay please we want her to pass this they did it out of innocence because that's all they knew but let me tell you something the devil never gives you anything free make no mistakes about it you will collect the goods now and pay for it later on okay. hallelujah are you listening to me? This is the problem with many of you. Your kingdom reigns. His kingdom reigns. Above all. Above all. Lord, your kingdom reigns. Above all. Above every cultural kingdom. Above every ordinance of darkness, your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns above all. Above all, yeah, Lord, your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns above all. Let me tell you something about the operation of these wicked spirits of darkness. They will not only wreck your marital life, your academics will be shattered, your personal self worth shattered, sicknesses you cannot account for. This is what many of you are suffering. Please hear me tonight. Don't trivialize what you are listening to. This could be the key that will help you maritally this could be the key i tell you when you dethrone satan you will be shocked the way doors will start opening for you hallelujah i'm going to pray enough is enough you can't be living like this except god has not called us except god has not sent us part of our mandate is to set the captives free i'm not a pastor our mandate is to set the captives free there are many of you that you, you are you are trusting god for marriage this year but the way things are going except god intervenes it will not work 
will not work. Hallelujah. There are some of you, you are a row of ladies in your house. Nobody has married. A row of people, four, five ladies. Nobody has married. One brother just comes, two days, he's not serious. Let me tell you, if this is my wife, and Bishop Stan wants to come and collect her, if I'm a responsible man, you think I'll just allow him, what will you do? You will fight unto them. They laid cold over the body of Moses. There are many barrenness issues. Some of your loved ones, they are busy insulting your sister, calling her a witch. And see, listen, I must balance this before we pray. Listen. This is where you need to be careful with prophets. Because this lady, look at me please. Let me teach you something. Listen. This sister here can be affected by a lot of demonic things from her. She may not even know. As a prophet, I can stand and I can see a demon behind this lady. It does not mean she's a witch. This is demonic oppression. Are you hearing me? I may pray for her. You see people who came for koinonia here roll on the floor. They are not witches. Many prophets have caused trouble in the body of Christ. They keep blaming people. A woman comes. Now you come and pray for her. A woman came to me. She came to complain about her husband. They were actually a woman brought them, two of them. They were quarreling. The woman was this and that and that and that. And then the husband now started calling the woman a witch. That a prophet told him his wife is a witch. He should, he should leave her alone. As I was talking to her, I now saw the spirit. And the woman started manifesting. The man said, you see? You see what I'm saying? Confirmation. Immediately I, I finished. The spirit in him jumped up and wanted to run out. He scattered the things there. Scattered my table. When he finished, I said, who now is a witch among two of you? Are you listening to me? Very important. You may not know the things you are dabbling into. And if spiritual knowledge is not given unto you, you will not, the Bible says, through wise counsel, make war. Some of you will be settling things. This is pre-miracle service. I tell you, don't miss next week's miracle service. What God will do in this place will surprise you. If you are coming here and you are not blessed, we are fake. Are you listening to me? If nothing is changing, that means, that means maybe we went to one shrine for something to pour on our head. But I tell you, there is a living God in this place. Are you ready? We are going to pray. Go back, sweetheart. One prayer point and I will begin ministering. Listen. You are going to pray this night. Tonight is not a night of shame. Tonight is the night when you will end some things. Some of you have struggled with pornography, master. You can't help it. This is demonic. You don't conquer demonic things by willpower. Brothers, it takes the anointing. It takes the anointing. There are many of you, you can't keep one relationship. You love a lady, two days later, you don't love her again. You think something is wrong. You go to another lady, two days later, you can't love her again. You, you are married, but you can't see another woman move. Come on, this is demonic. The Bible says, he that conceals his sin shall not prosper. We are going to rise tonight. Everybody rise up. I tell you, the devil, the devil is in trouble. Whatever allowed you to come here tonight is in trouble. Hallelujah. Now we are going to pray. Just for three or four minutes, you are going to pray. And say, Lord, whatever stronghold in my life, whatever, I don't care where it's coming from. Lord, this night, you are going to visit me. Some of you know what I'm talking about. The snakes in your dreams, the men that come to oppress you, these satanic kings. Outside, inside, make sure you are praying. Enough is enough. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness 
Seketeketa. Satan, you are in trouble tonight. Satan, you are in trouble. The strong man against families tying their marital destinies. Your time is up tonight. Pray like a priest. Pray like a priest. Pray for your family members. Pray for your loved ones. Pray for the buried people in your family. That barrenness. You have come to your end tonight. Light shines in the darkness. One more minute. Come on, pray. Shake it, take it, take it. Enough is enough. As soon as Zion travels, take it, 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 take Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, it will end. It will end. Please be in the mode of prayer. We are serious in this place. If your neighbor is distracting you, tell him, don't distract me. Don't distract me. Don't distract me. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Listen. I'm going to pray for people right now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me people. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for people. Oh, there will be mass, mass, listen, mass emancipation. Some of you who did not know that what is happening to you is demonic, you'll be surprised. Don't forget about your neighbor. Hallelujah. This spirit that comes to oppress you, hear me. Whether carrying the face of your brother, your mother, another woman, I don't care. Telling you they are married to you, listen to me. I tell you, I see fire in this place. Hallelujah. And I'm going to pray. Whether you fall down or not is, is not the issue. Right now. Believe and expect. There is a lady in that row. I see a spirit manifesting. Say snake kate lakanda. Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. We are going to shout the name Jesus once. My God, my God. Hallelujah. I tell you, I want you to shout it with faith. There is noise that will hit the gates of darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now hear me. Hear me. There are many of you snakes snakes the bible says i have given you authority luke 10 19 over snakes there is a reason why the bible calls snakes and scorpions lift your hands i'm going to pray the power of god will move in a mighty way anyone here that has been initiated into any demonic thing whether you know it or you do not know it right now lord jesus let the power of god move be it in dreams move i set you free right now right now right now right now right now be free be free be free come out of her out come out come out come out come out of her The children shall not suffer the iniquity. Every occult initiation, every initiation through sex, through dreams that will close the doors of your marital life. I challenge it. I challenge it. Hallelujah. Let her go. Come out of her. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. This is a snake. Come out. Come out right now.
out of her. Come out, go. Go right now. Listen, you are being delivered though. Don't wait till you fall. Something is happening. The presence of God is in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Ladies, say after me, I'm wonderfully and fearfully made. My body. Look at me. Look at me. Come. Come. Leave her, leave her. Shall the captives be delivered? Let this girl go now. Let this girl go now. The fire of the Holy Ghost is against you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Listen. Do you know for some of you, this is what spilled over into your academics. Many of you may not know. This is why no matter what you do, things don't happen. Don't miss miracle service. Sister, come. This is what you have suffered. Come, you. The lady put in her hand. Come out. Come, it's time for God to help you. No, you, you. The lady with pink, come. Please hurry up. We're out, we're out of time. There's fire burning all over this building. That devil... Look at me, sister. You have suffered. Your academics is not very good. This is a spirit. You are not lazy. Look at me. Look at me. Hallelujah. I set you free. It will cough out something now. That devil of darkness. In the name of Jesus. Let this girl go free. In the name of Jesus. Now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. See. Now in the next two to three minutes. You are going to pray for your family members. That as you are praying. Don't keep quiet. Some of you. Your sisters have suffered. If you can invite them here. For miracle service, invite them. If you cannot pray, lift your voice. Say, Satan, enough in my family. Enough. Pray. Pray. Satan, I stand representing my family. Get lost. Get lost. Get lost. I set altars of darkness on fire. Get lost. Outside are you praying? Outside are you praying? Outside are you praying? My family comes under divine protection. My family, pray for your sister, pray for your brothers. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! This is what is happening in many of our homes. This is why daddy is fighting with mommy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right now in the next two minutes, I want you to cause, listen, any seed of barrenness, whether in your life, ladies, I want you to pray this. If you need to lay hands on your womb, lay hands on your stomach, do it. Pray for your sisters at home. Pray. I am fruitful. Pray. I am fruitful. No devil 
no devil. Please take this prayer seriously. Take this prayer seriously. The Bible says, be fruitful. I am fruitful. I am fruitful. No barrenness. No barrenness. No barrenness. Ladies, pray. No fibroids. No demonic clothes. No fibroids. Guys, pray. Every devil of impotency is cursed. Pray for your family members. Barriness. Hear the word of the Lord. Barriness. I don't care how long. I don't care how long. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye. The power of God is still moving. The power of God is still moving. Let her go. Come out. Come out now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I want to pray for you. We're out of time. Lift your hands, everybody. If it doesn't apply to you what I'm saying, you can connect for your parents or your family members. Any lady here or any woman with any demonic growth called fibroid or any kind of cyst, listen, in the name that is above all names, I curse it right now. I curse it right now. I cut that growth away from your body. I flush it out of your body. I flush it out of your body. Any satanic medical condition, whether your fallopian tube is blocked, you don't have womb, even if you lived a promiscuous life before and you lost a womb, I create a new one right now. When God forgives sins, he forgives the consequences. Hallelujah. I pray whatever has held your marital destiny that the man that is destined for you cannot come or you cannot get married right now. Be released. Be released. Be released. I release you. Enter your marital destiny. Enter your marital destiny. I command it. Enter your marital destiny. Enter your marital destiny. Hallelujah. Whoever has been tied here in any wrong ordinance, whether it was unknowing, some of you enter relationships, you go and cut yourself, cut the guy, drink your blood, you call it love. This is nonsense. But I want to pray for you now. The Bible says the blood of Jesus speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. Satan, hear my voice. Over the lives of these people, I command right now, take your hands away. Take your hands away. Take your hands away. Lift up your heads, all you gates. Be ye lifted. Ancient doors. Ancient doors. Every altar of darkness. My Bible says, whatever has not been planted by God will be uprooted. I uproot, I tear down, I set on fire in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of lust, every spirit of lust, please lift your hands. I'm praying for everybody. 
every spirit of lust that keeps taking you back into immorality whether you want it or not right now in the name of jesus i set you free i set you free i set you free receive it receive freedom against lust hallelujah anyone here under the curse of habit lesbianism homosexuality look you must not be just lift your hands i'm praying for you don't say i'm not uh -uh. whether homosexuality listen lesbianism all kinds of things there are people that sleep with animals and do i'm speaking for the sake of the many who will be hearing not necessarily just you there are some of you ladies you have affection for one another guys affection you think it's normal this is satanic right now in the name of jesus i deliver you from this curse in the name of jesus be free be free be free Hallelujah. finally i pray for you whatever you have lost because of the times of ignorance some of you have suffered heartbreaks some of you have suffered a lot of things i pray there is a god that can restore the years canker worms have eaten lift your hands i want to pray this is finally father in the name of jesus i pray that for many people between now and miracle service give them a big miracle between now and miracle service you will testify on friday upon this altar you will testify i release breakthrough breakthrough that will bring restoration you will testify i open doors of favor doors of grace doors of academics i challenge darkness you will sleep like a baby no more fibroid no more growths no more pains no more aches you are free all the spirits that come to torment you you will see them no more you will sleep like a baby forever hallelujah hallelujah you've not given your heart to the lord jesus christ you are in this place listen to me this is the most important thing if you have not given your heart please let them not go sister don't go yet you've not given your heart to the lord you are already in danger hallelujah what an opportunity as we prepare for our great miracle service next week you're here you've never given your heart to the lord or you've given your heart to the lord and you found yourself derailing honestly you've entered ways that are not of god and you want to make it right right now please we, we are limited we just have a minute or two for you inside and outside as the lord speaks to you you've seen what the lord is doing in this place hallelujah the bible says come unto me all ye that are heavy laden and i will give you rest leave your seat and come out right now i want to agree with you i want to pray with you appreciate them as they come there are people who have never given their lives to christ or this is their first decision please don't sit back don't wait for somebody else inside and outside quickly keep clapping thank you for coming thank you sister thank you sister god bless you there are people outside don't sit back there come and stand here quickly keep appreciating them thank you thank you sir the lord is bringing you to change you i see you my brother god bless you thank you thank you my sister thank you sir appreciate them koinonia it's your sacrifice to bring them to the kingdom god bless you bring all of them here hallelujah Thank you, my brother and my sister, for coming. This will be the beginning. Keep coming if you still want to come. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, say it from your heart. Lord Jesus, I love you. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. I declare that I'm born again. I'm a child of God. The grace of God is at work in my life. Hello. From today, scriptures exhort us from the Spirit book of Proverbs. And God it says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, 
Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.